Okay, so what we're going to start doing now is we're going to start looking at aromatase inhibitors or estrogen control. The first thing we need to be aware of is how this occurs. Now, estrogen is formed by the conversion of testosterone by aromatase. Two main ways of dealing with this is you stop the production of aromatase in the first place, which is aromatase inhibition, or you block the receptors for estrogen, which is selective estrogen receptor modulators, i.e. tamoxifen. Clomid. But there is a bit in between. Now, Rosin, or also known as Exmastain, doesn't stop the production of aromatase, but it binds with the enzyme, preventing it from having any effect on testosterone. Now, it's a half life of 24 hours, detection time of 4 to 5 days, and doses range from 2.5 to 50 milligrams per day. Uh, because it doesn't stop the production of aromatase, there's no rebound post usage. It also has a very minimal impact on lipid values. In fact, it's been shown at 0.0001% impact on HDL, whereas Aromidex and Letrozole have a much greater impact on cholesterol levels. Now, obviously, steroids affect cholesterol levels already, so avoiding compounding that problem with your estrogen management is a lot healthier. Now, a dose of 25 milligrams per day has been shown to reduce estrogen by 85%. So this stuff is pretty good. Generally, most people will start running this at about 12.5 milligrams every other day and go from there. I generally prefer to run this and to moxifen. That way I allow my estrogen levels to be slightly elevated, which means I get the benefit of high estrogen from a point of health and growth, but I block the receptor to minimize side effects. Um, and that is really it. Um, there's no real hepatoxicity, so there's no real issues with, with liver or kidneys or anything like that. Low impact on lipids and very effective estrogen management. A bit pricey, granted, uh, but it would be my go-to drug because you don't have the lipid manipulation and it's not overly harsh on, on estrogen values. So um, you can control estrogen very, very well. Obviously, the ideal way is to get blood tests and you see exactly where your estrogen management is and you can adjust accordingly. So that's it. Um, that is aromacin or exmastain. It also is very similar to a drug called formastain, uh, which is a slightly weaker alternative that some people do go for from availability. Uh, as I said, it does not affect production of aromatase, so therefore there's no rebound post usage. When you suppress aromatase production, when you remove that suppression, its production will rebound and it will go into overdrive. This doesn't have that because it binds with the aromatase once it's been produced, um, making it inert. Okay, so there you go. Right, that's it. Next week we'll look at aromatase. Thank you very much.